Hey. <laughs> I try to think of new ways to say hi, hello, hey, hola, konnichiwa, bienvenue, but it always comes out the same way, like hey, or hey, 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 or what's up? <laughs> Anyway, people, it is 7 o'clock, me being silly. I am Takiya LaShawn, and it is 7 o'clock. Hey, Cherry. And we are about to begin. Uh, we're in week number seven, day number four. We're going to pick right back up, and we are going to continue with our uh, Be Still Devotional Growth Workbook and Bible Study Series. We are in our descent of this study not our descent of utilizing this because we are going to continue to utilize these steps that we have implemented and, and are being instilled in our life. But we are in week seven in this seven week journey where we have been studying out the Bible, digging deeper into God's word and just learning what he says about moving forward. And we have been utilizing the tactics calling called Be Still in order to move forward. And this has been a seven week journey where we have uh, covered surrendering, we have covered submission, we have covered obedience, faith, prayer, praise, and now again we are on our, our final descent in worship as we are studying out the Bible. Um, so yesterday I took a break. Everybody, I hopped on for a little bit yesterday. I said, um, unless the Lord told me to, that I said I would plan on being here at 7, um, unless he told me otherwise, and I did feel led. Just spend some time. It was Mother's Day. It was my son's 16th birthday. And so... Um, I got on just to say hi and show some gratitude and love to everyone. So we are continuing. We're going to pick up where we left off. We're not going to skip any days or skip any time. We're just going to keep going. So again, we are on day number four in week number seven. And I am going to go ahead and open up in prayer. And then we are going to get started on, I believe, let's see what worksheet I can tell you so you can have that pulled up. Once we finish up in prayer, we're going to be on worksheet number 38 is what we're going to be working on tonight. Okay, so worksheet number 38. Let me go ahead and open up in prayer and then we will get started. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just come before you right now, just humbly submitting and surrendering ourselves to you, Father, just recognizing you first and foremost as God, Abba, King, Lord, Savior, daddy healer strength deliverer peace everything that we need and all that we are is hinged in you father god and as we approach your throne we know exactly who we are approaching and we thank you father for the opportunity to come before you we thank you father for this opportunity to gather and fellowship here on this platform and in accord and in agreement with one another. But most importantly, Lord God, according to your plan, your will and your purpose that you have for each and every life here. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, right now, I pray over this Bible study. I pray over every ear that hears and every eye that sees that is now in the present and those to come in the future, those listening across the the broadcast and the podcast. I thank you, Father God, for their peace, Lord God. I thank you right now for an atmosphere of complete and total, Lord God, um, surrender to you. I thank you, Father, that there are no distractions. I bind the spirit of discord and misunderstanding, miscommunication of the word, Father God, and I loose and I release, Father God, your complete and total peace. Where Wherever they are, Father God, just let, Lord God, your presence manifest and settle in. I loose and release understanding for you said in your word, if any among us lack wisdom, or let, let us ask of you who gives liberally. So, Father, we ask that you give, Lord God, your wisdom. We ask that you shed light and give us understanding through your word. For you said the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So illuminate, Lord God, the path of our lives with the word of God as you enlighten the eyes of our understanding, Father. Lord, keep our heart and mind stayed on you as we study this out, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to just touch each and every one of us in our personal lives and our daily lives, Lord God, as you teach us how to not only study the word, but to apply the word for the word of God 
is intended to be applied, not just read, Lord God, but help us to understand it and to apply it, Father. For you said that you've given us an unction and we know all things because of the Holy Spirit. So where we fall short in our understanding, Father God, let the Holy Spirit be our guide, who is our comforter, our confidant, and our friend, Father God. Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, for um, using me as a vessel, Lord God, pour into me that I may continue to pour out to these listeners and viewers, Father God. Use me as your tool in any manner, in any way that you see fit, Father God. Lord, I decrease. According to John 3 and 30, you said I must decrease, that you increase, that you might increase in me more, Lord God. And I just thank you for you having your way. I surrender, I submit, and I obey, Lord God, that which you say. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. Hey there, hey there. Okay, let's get to it. So, we are picking up. I hope everyone had a wonderful Mother's Day on yesterday. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Had a really good time with my kids and my my son's birthday. Um, just had a really good time. But um, so thank you for um, your grace and understanding that I took a night off. And it felt kind of weird because I have gotten so used to this. Like, what we going to do? When we get to day seven, at the end of week seven, ladies, what are we going to do? <laughs> um, so anyway, we're talking about Worksheet 3038. 30, hey, Auntie. Hey, Mama Leslie. Who else has gotten on here? I said hi to Cherry. Hey, everyone. So, um, hey, Kamala. So, um... We're on 30. Happy Camilla. Um, happy Camilla. Happy Mother's Day, Camilla. I didn't. I thought about you um, earlier today. You know, your mind starts going. You're like, oh, I didn't talk to this person. I didn't talk to that person, which I know you understand. I mean, we would be on the phone all day long if we just, um, you know, I'm about to start rambling. So happy Mother's Day. <laughs> all right. So we're picking up on 38 is where we left off worksheet number 38. And that was where we talked about homage. And homage means to give recognition or to show respect and esteem with regard to who God is. So when we talk about paying homage, we are showing recognition, we are giving recognition, and we are showing respect. It is a form of just what it says to give to God. So when we pay homage, it is something that we are giving directly to that person, place, thing, or individual. And in this is the term, we're talking about God. We're talking about daddy. He is the one we are giving homage to. You can give homage to, um, let's say like ML, Martin Luther King, he comes to mind. Like you think about um, literally every most, I haven't been to all 50 states, but I know whenever I've traveled, I, there's not been one state that I've gone to where you don't see there's like a Martin Luther King Boulevard. And so that's the, you know, and we have different holidays and we have uh, Martin Luther King. We have, um, we have that day that we celebrate. So that's a form of homage. We're showing recognition and giving respect to. So that term is not exclusive to God, but in this study right here, we're talking about giving homage to God. And we are, when we are talking about worship and we are learning different ways to approach God and press into worship and worship him, homage is what we give to God. We give recognition and we show a deep level of respect and esteem uh, with regard to just who he is, not anything he's done, not anything he's going to do, but simply just who he is. And so your assignment was to read Matthew 15, 21 through 28. And I have standout scriptures. The next uh, few nights are going to be studies like this, where we get into the word and look at different forms of worship and ways to worship. And the standout scripture in this selection was Matthew 20, Matthew 15 and 25. that says the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. So we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. And what you're supposed to do is just kind of a writing assignment. Because again, we said, I, you know, in, in this study of worship, as God gave it to me and as I was putting together the workbook, and even as he spoke it to me, there wasn't a whole lot other than, yeah, this is something that you do. Now, everything, all of the tacticals that I've been speaking and teaching on, they are proactive and you have to do. But worship is something that 
it is a participator sport. It's not a spectator, spectator sport. You got to get in the game, man. You got to be like, coach, put me in the game. You got to get in there. You can't sit on the sidelines, on the bench. You got to get in the game. And so worship is the, the, the teaching this week is a little different because I am expecting and praying that the Holy Spirit press you to actually get in worship. I can give you these little tacticals and steps, but this is one that you just got to do it. So let's get into this reading. What I want to do is I'm going to read both, both, uh, versions teaching out of the NIV because it's simple and easy to read and understand. But I've noticed as I've been teaching, there is a, a bit of difference sometimes in the scripture. So I may speak the scripture knowing it from KJV. And then when I go to NIV, it's a little differently. So for the sake of that I do want to I'm going to read from the KJV first and then I'm going to close out or not close out I'm going to read NIV also and then we're going to break those apart and show you talk about how she gave homage to um Jesus and who he was okay and who he was and then she ended up getting what she wanted so I'm reading Matthew 15 21 through 28 go ahead and follow along with me and again, this first one is the KJV, and then I'll circle back around and read NIV because it's not a very long reading. So it says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So basically, I didn't come here for you. I, I came with a purpose and a plan, and that purpose and that plan, I'm sorry, it did, it did not involve, it does not involve you. 25. Then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. 26. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dog. So basically, like, look, lady, I just told you you're not a part of the purpose and the plan. And you're, you're asking me for the crumbs. You know, that's that's I'm not here for you. 27. And she said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. That text right there is so very powerful. So much wrapped up in there. Now, let's circle around to the NIV, and then I'm going to teach from that. I want to read the KJV so you have a, you know, a parallel. I'm going to read the NIV, and then we're going to teach on that because there's so much good stuff wrapped up in just that small little bit of reading. All right, so I'm reading from the NIV now. The faith of the Canaanite woman. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A, Can a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out lord son of david have mercy on me my daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly 23 jesus did not answer her a word so his disciples came to him and urged him send her away for she keeps crying out after us 24 he answered i was sent only to the lost sheep of israel 25 the woman came and knelt before him Lord, help me, she said. 26, he replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And finally, 20, 28. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. All right. That's that's so good. It's so powerful. Like I'm so ready to get into this. <laughs> it's like I want to get up and do a little tap dance on that. And I know y'all felt that as I was reading as you've studied out and read it. But let's so again, we're talking about worship this week. And this this 
vein or this perspective of worship that we're talking about right now is homage. And we talked about how homage means to um, show a, give recognition or to show respect and esteem with regard to who God is. So let's look at how this Canaanite woman paid homage to Jesus Christ, to the, to um, a God who, who basically was saying, I'm not even your God. I, I'm not even here for you. Okay, so in 22, and these are some things that I underline if you want to underline or highlight in your Bible, because we are studying the Bible. It's okay. Your Bible should be marked up, highlighted, dotted, circled, pages folded, not sitting pretty with dust on it, okay? <laughs> so if, if that's the Bible that you have that you read out right now, get your study Bible, <laughs> the one you can write in. So 22 says a Canaanite woman from that vicinity, the first thing that stood out the, that she did that paid homage, it says she came to him, came to him. That is the first thing I underlined. She paid him homage, number one, because she recognized I got to go to Jesus. I got to go to God. I got to go to my Lord. I got to go to my Savior. I've got to go to him. Well, let me back up. Remember, he says, and we're going to read that, that he only came for the lost sheep of Israel. He basically was coming. Remember, the children of Israel were God's chosen people. And he basically said, I am here for those that have lost their way and I've come to find them. I, I didn't come here for you. And she paid homage to him because she wasn't even God's chosen but she reverenced and she recognized with great esteem and great respect who he was. So number one was she came to him. So in our worship, we have to recognize who we are coming to. Then it says, she said, crying out, Lord. Okay. She cried out to him. She knew I can't just be quiet on this. I can't not say anything. I have to make my voice heard. I have to make my voice known. And it didn't say she spoke out. It didn't say she whispered. It didn't say she waved and said, Psst, Jesus, come here. It didn't say she tried to hide the fact that she, this was not her Lord. She didn't try to hide the fact that she, she, she went to him unbridled and unashamed. So crying out meant she had to really vocally open up to get his attention. So it says she cried out. And then thirdly, she referenced him as Lord. She didn't call him Jesus. She called him Lord, son of David. She, reckoned, she recognized and referenced his lineage. And then I circled here is one of the first things she did as she entered into worship in her, her, her form of homage. It says that she said, have mercy on me. She knew that in her worship, she was going before someone that she had every right and every reason to recognize his authority to grant her mercy. She recognized that nothing and no one else in my surroundings, exterior influence internally within me, nothing else grants me mercy like my worship and homage to my, to, to the Lord. She said, have mercy on me. Okay. So I circled have mercy. Then we go on and she talks about, it talks about, First, Jesus, he didn't say a word. So how does that equate to your, your, your worship? You're, you're going into worship. You've recognized who God is. You've called out to God. You're crying out to God. You're worshiping him. But you don't feel nothing. I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. The atmosphere doesn't feel different. 23 says, Jesus did not answer a word. He didn't answer a word because he was watching and waiting. Let me see how your homage is going to go. Are you just going to pop in here and uh, go through the motions because this is not your heart's attitude, but it is just a religious act? Jesus didn't say a word. He was watching her homage. 
So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, send her away. But listen, listen to what they said. For she keeps crying out after us. Jesus didn't respond to her. She showed him homage. She reverenced his name. She called him Lord. She came to him. She cried out to him, have mercy on me. I am worshiping you. I am surrendering to you. I am reverencing you. I don't hear you saying anything. You're not even looking at me. I don't feel the atmosphere changing, but everything and everyone else is recognizing I'm still crying out. I'm still crying out because I am going to enter in. I'm not just doing this to go through the motions. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep pursuing for she keeps crying out after us. I'm going to keep paying homage. All right, 24. She must have pushed into something because he answered. Okay, wait a minute. Well, all right, she's here. She's here and she's come and she's called me Lord and she showed up and she out here crying and crying out to me and tugging. So let me just speak. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Let's see. Did she get offended? That's, that's all you're going to say to me, God, I, I'm coming to you and I paid homage to you and I'm crying out and I'm worshiping you. And all you got to say is you not here for me. Let's see what she says. Nope, that wasn't her response. 25, it says, the woman came and knelt before him. Oh, okay, Lord, see, let me show you that I'm not playing, that I am serious about reverencing you and recognizing who you are. I'm gonna get down on my knees. She knelt, and in the KJV, it says she worshiped him. So we're talking about worship. She knelt, so kneeling before God is a form of homage, is a form of reverence, uh, reverence. Yes, you can walk and you can pace. Yes, you can do it driving. Yeah, we talked about that. You can worship in many places. You can do things. But we talk about how our bodies, when we learn in praise that we can use our, our um, hands and our feet and our voice. And even we don't have that, this body, this temple is a form of showing praise and reverence and worship and adoration to God. And it says she knelt. When we think about kneeling, Jesus is here. I don't know how tall or short she was. I don't know how tall or short Jesus was. But he's standing and she's standing. And she says, let me show you that I understand that I'm not on your level. I'm going to get down here. I am going to pay homage. I am going to show myself physically that I am lower than you. And I know that you are the one who is higher than me. So it says she came and knelt before him. And then she speaks up again, Lord. So now she's gone from a standing posture and saying, Lord, crying out, son of David, have mercy on me. She says, okay, you know what? Let me show you that I mean business with you. Let me show you that I know who you are. And she kneels before him. And she references him as Lord again. And then she says, help me. I recognize you have the authority not only to have mercy on me, but now, Lord, I need you to help me. Because I reference or I reverence and I recognize that you are also a helper. Okay. Now she's got his attention. Now she's got his attention. She isn't there just for idle um purposes she isn't there just to for religious acts or because you know i'm told i'm supposed to do this she's there because she wants to do it she's there to prove um to him that she is paying homage 28 he's he replied look i understand you've come before me you've referenced me as lord you got you you came to the right place first and foremost you you you've called me called upon me for mercy you have kneeled before me. You, you honoring me. You honoring me. But listen, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. <gasps> yes. Did Jesus just call this lady a dog? <laughs> he did. <laughs> Jesus said it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. All right. 
she's worshipped him. She has paid homage to him. She has asked for mercy. She has asked for help. And basically, I've been insulted. All right, y'all follow the parallel. Because we going through worship and we got all these things going on on the exterior in our own personal lives. But are we pressing? into worship are we pressing to pay homage no matter what's going on when the world is telling us you know i'm cross uh, you're not worth the crumbs that i feed my dog all right let's see what her response is because she could have got full-on offended and be like who you think you're talking to okay no she understood i am paying homage to this man to this 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 my the lord 27 she says, yes, 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 it is, Lord. She made a definitive statement to Jesus when he said, is it right for me? She didn't waver. She wasn't offended. She wasn't shaken or stirred. She didn't clutch her pearls, get up, dust herself off, throw her head up in the air and move on. She said, yes, it is, Lord, because I pay homage to you i worship you i reverence and i recognize you and she says even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the masters wait what who did she just call jesus the masters table homage she is showing a deep level of recognition and respect to who he is and she says jesus i'll take it however you give it i pay homage to you now look at this when i was reading this let's go over we're going to come back to this but what came what what scripture came to mind uh when she said definitively when she didn't waver and she answered him yes it is lord what i heard was the promises of god are yea and amen she knew that's second corinthians 1 and 20 let's go there real quick i just want to give you that to reference for your notes as word to stand on when the world is telling you otherwise like you can't have that god's not gonna do that that's impossible what do you mean this woman right here said, yes, it is. And then she still said, Lord, you just call me a dog. You told me you wasn't here for me. You told me, you, you know, you, you told me that, um, it wasn't right to take the crumbs and you asking me if I'm still okay with this first Corinthians, where am I going? One in 20, one in 20. She in that statement paid homage to Jesus Christ because she gave him back his word pretty much. First Corinthians one in 20. Hmm. I'm sorry, second Corinthians. <laughs> now y'all looking like that don't make no sense, Kia. That scripture is not what you just told us. Second Corinthians one in 20. 2 Corinthians 1, and, or 2 and 20. Y'all, please forgive me. Why do I keep, because it's, it's 2 Corinthians 1. I keep wanting to change that 1 and that 2 around. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. Why well, I'm speaking to y'all like y'all slow when I'm the one who can't get it. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea and amen amen to the glory of god by us so back to the canaanite woman in matthew 15 and uh 27 well with 26 when he said is it not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs she basically gave him second corinthians 1 and 20 uh yes yes Yes, it is, Lord, because she what she did was in her worship. She engrafted herself into that because Jesus said, I didn't come for you. I came for the lost sheep of Israel. And she said, well, I am an offspring of the lost sheep of Israel because the Canaanites, the children of Israel, basically their sons. Um, I forget whose son specifically, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, I know, I know the stories of the Bible, but I know that, um, 
it was a son that the father did not want him to go and be with the Canaanite woman. Do not go and intermingle with this tribe. And the son was disobedient, the sons, and basically intermingled tribes and they were not the chosen ones. And she said, she basically told God or Jesus, yeah, I am an offspring. I may not line right up in that lineage, but baby, I've been engrafted. Okay. She didn't call Jesus baby, but she, she said, Lord, I've been engrafted and I may not be up here, but I am going to get down here and pay homage because I recognize you as my Lord. I recognize that you are the one who can have mercy on me. I recognize you're the one who can help me. So no matter what you say, I'm coming to you and paying homage to you and in, in, in worship. And I know that I know that I know that yes, it is the promises of God in him are yea and amen. And I'm engrafted into those promises. She worshiped him with so much. Oh, what's the word? Holy Spirit. She became lowly. There's a word. It's, it's in the study. But she saw herself. She placed herself in a position to give him complete homage, to give him complete worship. And he said to her, Woman, you have great faith because you came to me. You cried out to me and you referenced me as Lord. And you even said, son of David, you recognize that we are of a different lineage. But you asked me for mercy. You pressed into worship. You pressed into my presence and you kept crying out so much so that others around you, it impacted and affected them in your worship unto me when I rejected that you knelt down remember kneeling that is so important our worship getting down on your knees before God and I know different things dictate you know sometimes you know some of us have health issues or things like that even if it's you can lay prostrate you can the lower you can go it's like limbo how low can you go lay flat take time to worship God, take time. I told you when I go into worship, what I do sometimes I will lay flat on my face, just belly flat to the floor. And I imagine my hands at the Savior's feet. You know, I'm at his feet. I want him to know I pay homage to you. I worship you. I love you. I know who I'm coming before. And um, he said, woman, you have great faith. You have great faith. He received her worship. He received her worship. And we talked about this. You just keep showing up. You keep going before him. <coughs> even when you don't think he's listening. Even when you don't think. We talked about the woman with the issue of blood. You have to touch him. You have to know that you know that you know that I am going to touch him. And when you touch him, that worship he can't help but release that virtue. Remember he said to her, who touched me? Because I felt virtue leave my body. I felt the anointing. I felt somebody get what they needed. I felt that. I did not even have a choice. When you worship Jesus Christ like that, when you worship God, your, your father like that, he does not have a point uh, or a, a choice, not a point. You've heard pulling on the anointing. I've heard it say you can pull on the anointing. When, when people show up and they want the things of God and they want the word of God and you just want nothing but God, he knows. He knows your heart. That's what he was doing here with the Canaanite woman. Let me watch her a little bit. Let me listen, see what she's talking about. Let me take a look at her actions and see if she's just putting on a show. Is this a setup? Is she just trying to appease me? She's just trying to come and just get something from me? She wanted something from him. She did. She wanted her daughter healed. However, in her wanting, she paid homage and she knew who she was going before. And she knew that there was a protocol there. There was proper protocol with regard to worshiping him. And in his worship, again, he received it by saying, woman, you have great faith. And then he requested your grant, your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. When we worship God, 
again, we pull on his presence. He not only comes to see about us because he's like, wait a minute. This is a true worshiper here. Remember, we talked about worshipers in spirit and in truth. And, and we are setting aside and being set apart because we recognize and we reverence that we worship from our heart, which is connected to the spirit of God. And he not only comes because he knows that his presence, his presence is requested, but he shows up and he says, well, I got something for you too. So tied in our worship is our victory also, but it is so homage is a form of worship. One of those forms of worship in homage is kneeling before him. So that's an action that we covered tonight. We saw she was persistent. We saw that she was not offended at the fact that maybe he didn't listen or turn ear or show up right and away or give. She wasn't there for petty looks or because um, it was told it was the right thing. She knew within her heart of hearts and she was going before him completely, completely stripped down, unashamed, broken and contrite. Remember we talked about that a couple of nights ago, the last study, broken and contrite. She was just completely crushed before him without any shame to her game, basically. And she, he watched that. So again, Jesus watches the worship. God watches the worship. He watches the heart. He looks over the eyes of the Lord, searches to and fro. He's seeking, looking for those whose heart is right towards him. Jesus watched and he said, her heart is right. Her heart is right. And um, she pulled on him. She pulled on him. He received that worship. So that's important to know too. When you are getting into the presence of God or when you are pressing into the presence of God, you want God to receive your worship. You want it to be sincere. You don't want to give him um, crumbs like he referenced with her. Um, you want to give him the best of what you have. So, and only you know what dictates that. Only you know um you know, like I said, it don't always take long. It's a heart attitude. It doesn't always take, is there a time and a place that you really should spend a substantial amount of time in worship? Absolutely. Absolutely. But does it mean that you always have to have hours upon hours? It's a heart attitude. So I referenced, um, my testimony a few weeks ago when I talked about how I had a visitation from Jesus and, and, and that, that was the first time that's ever happened to me. So, um, but I, I talk about that and I say the morning that that happened, it was no out of the ordinary morning. It was just like any other day. And I had been worshiping all week. I was fasting and praying and I've been worshiping all week, but my heart was just in a place of such reverence and adoration and love for him. And I got up that morning and I remember getting up and I went to go brush my teeth and then I was going to do a few things. But after I came out of my bathroom and brushed my teeth, just a song began to rise up in my spirit and I put it on my Alexa to play. And I laid on the floor prostrate on my face because that was the position of worship I wanted to enter into. I wanted to pay homage. I wanted him to know, I just want to lay at your feet. I just want to just, and it was instantly, instantly that Jesus was like, I'm here. There's times when I press into worship and that, that, presence that tangible presence of God the atmosphere you know when Jesus shows up you know when the king enters the room you know when God has come to see about you the atmosphere atmosphere changes you feel it sometimes there's tears uh sometimes there's joy I talked about this a few weeks ago too I told you my, my kids think it is they call it creepy they <laughs> they say I I laugh in the spirit there are times that the presence of God shows up and I could literally go from weeping and crying 
to just all out uncontrollable laughter and it is joy is what mom I, I was reaching for a word and mama leslie said the spirit of joy and that is what is just it's this deep from the pit of my belly laughter and it's uncontrollable and my kids said it's real they're like they say i scared them <laughs> but i mean i guess it is weird to go from completely crying to laughing and you can't stop but Anyway, and that's not to say that everybody's experience is different. I'm just talking about when you get into worship and your heart is set on, I just want you, God. I just want to love you. I just, I want to push away all the thoughts and things that I think I might need and stuff that's going on. And I just want to get before you and pay homage to you. He shows up and... Lord, he shows out at times too. So you will know, like I said, it is just so, I can't really explain worship to you. I pray that um, the word, I know the word, we have this, this scripture here to stand on, um, but I, I can't say enough. It is a participator, part, uh, 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 an action. You got to participate in worship. You cannot. Yep, a sweet smell that um, my auntie just says a sweet smell. I mean, literally the the atmosphere can change. You can go into you can go into worship in a state of you just went through something. You're dealing with something. You have a heavy heart. Um, you fight in oppression, you fight in depression, you fight in whatever, but when you just lay at his feet, and when I say lay at his feet, I'm saying physical, but I'm talking also in the natural mind when you decide nothing else even matters right now. I just got to get before him and lay down at his feet and just tell him, Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Lord, thou son of David, help me but it's from my heart. You get into that and he shows up and you walk out of there with the spirit of joy. And that's a lot of times when it manifests for me. I have been, I'll have been going through heavy, heavy attack and heavy, heavy mental, um, bur just things that I have endured. And it's those times when I'm like, <laughs> I don't know nothing else and what else to do except for go worship you and I'm going to come there just like this Canaanite woman because I am nothing. I know nothing. I have nothing without you, but you are the one who is everything. You are my Abba and I acknowledge you and I reverence you and I can just lay at your feet and he shows up. And he says, I receive your worship. So when I say, when, when we talk about the Canaanite woman and he said, you have great faith, that's, that's symbolic of the fact that he received her worship. She approached him the right way and she didn't stop and she didn't give up and she wasn't offended and she wasn't ashamed. She worshiped him. She paid homage. She, all these people around and think about it. And spectators from the sideline, they're probably like, what, you know, what is what Melissa over here doing? I mean, I just threw that name out. What in the world is Melissa over here doing? She don't even, she's not even an Israelite. And I mean, we don't even, she went against the grain. She went against the grain. Her heart's attitude was, I am going to push past all these people. I'm going to push past my frailties and my fears and my um, humiliation and I am going to pull on him and pull on him and pull on him until he has no choice. Because see, Jesus also was in front of that crowd, in front of his disciples, in front of that crowd. And she's basically out there calling him out. You are Lord. You are the son of David. You are the one. You are, you are merciful, Lord. You can help me, Lord. He had no choice. He had no choice but to bless her because 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, is it right for me to, yes, yes, Lord, it is because your promises are yes and amen and I have been engrafted in. He had to show up for her. Otherwise, he would have been denying himself. 
And when you show up and you pay homage and you worship him, he cannot deny himself, which means he cannot deny you. Okay, it is Mama Leslie Push. She said it is something that you must experience for yourself. It is so personal. It is. I'm going to lift this up. My feet are going to sleep. It is. It is so personal. It is a personal experience. So I pray that in this study, you all are pressing into um, the presence of God, getting deeper in to his presence and just applying the applying. Um, the scripture and letting the scripture inspire you because again, it is just so personal. So, um, what else this, so that's, that's all I have for the study tonight. Again, excuse me, these, um, this week's tactical is not super long studies because it is, we participate, not spectate. And let's look at, um, there's some other, there's something else I wanted to share with you all um, that was on my heart right before I get on. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But let's go to um, worksheet number 39. And let's talk about that one. So I did on 38, We the, the standout scripture was um, Matthew 15, 25 where she knelt so that's how she a form of homage was she knelt before him she made herself of lesser degree physically because our worship is a spiritual uh thing but it also requires some natural acts on our part as well and in her paying homage she didn't she didn't just give him lip service sometimes we can give lip service we can talk we can talk talk, talk. remember don't talk about it be about it she was about it she was about it about it OK, so she paid homage and she physically knelt and showed I pay homage to you. This is a form of worship that I am showing you. So that's one of your key things there is in worship is kneel before him, kneel before him, lay out. Do what you got to do so that he understands you're giving him reverence. That you are john 3 and 30 you are decreasing to show that he has room to increase all right worksheet number 39 so that was homage that was one form kneeling now let's look at reverence reverence is wrapped up in our worship it says reverence means to show regard or a deep level of respect and honor to god reverence so your assignment for tonight is going to be reading exodus 34 1 through 10 and pay attention to your uh, standout scripture, 34, 8. Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshiped. Okay, so you see in Rev. So you, you all see where I'm going with these. Uh, homage. She knelt. She showed herself lower. Moses is bowing. I'm not going to start on that because I'll start teaching it. <laughs> um, so read that tonight. That's your assignment in... 39 worksheet 39 tonight okay so that's all i have tonight um i wanted to this was on my heart i was thinking about it earlier and then i didn't even realize my shirt that i had on i don't know if y'all can see it it's gonna be backwards i realize with you all but it says it's it's the word he h-e and then it has um the greater symbol, you know, greater than, less than in math, it's like the little arrow. So greater than would be pointing, <laughs> the point would be pointing to your left and then less than would be pointing to the right, I believe. Anyway, and then the letter I. So it means he greater than I. He is greater than I. And my sister Cindy blessed me with this shirt. She went to Hawaii uh, last year. Whenever she travels, she always brings me something back. And um, she, let me tell y'all, I am spoiled like a baby sister. She she is um, older than me, but she just treats me like a baby sister for real. And I'm the oldest out of my, uh, well, me and my sister grew up. I do have another sibling, uh, but in my household, I am the oldest. So it's pretty fun being treated like the baby sister when I was always the big sister. And my sister Cindy spoils me. And um, so she brought me this shirt back last year when she went to Hawaii. Huh. 
I can't pronounce it. Ha Halua, I think is Halua, Hawaii. But anyway, there's this company called He Greater Than I, and it's a Christian based company. And, uh, the testimony in the story, listen, y'all, I have a million and one testimonies. I see Jesus. I see God in everything, everything. But this, this, um, t-shirt, I remember what it was I was going through that day, but it was something where I was in worship with God and I was just dealing with some things and I was just talking to God about how I am just God. You're in control and I am. I am I I recognize my place. You're greater than me. You're, you know, I don't remember it specifically, but I remember I wrote a God morning post about it. And then she flies home from Hawaii that day. And hey, sis, I got you something. And it's this shirt, he greater than I. And you're talking about just tears, just boohoo crying because God speaks to us in so many ways. Hey, Monica, God speaks to us in so many ways. And his gentle... Things like that to me are his gentle hugs and kisses when he can touch another individual to think about you through someone because that's how God, we, we, we're all blessed in that aspect. Some of us have different levels and different relationships, but we all have, even if it's just one person, we all have people and things in our life. And even if they're complete strangers, God can use us. Exactly. Thank you, Mama Leslie. She put it in there. So it looks like that. He greater than I. So it's the math symbol that references, you know, greater than, less than, equal to, but it's he greater than I. And, um, but we all have people in our lives that, and even strangers, God can use a complete stranger to send a word or a, a spiritual reminder that I just love you. And God does this all the time for me. And I know he does it for you. You just have to pay attention and look for it. And remember, I said, I see Jesus. I see God and everything. When you learn to understand and know how much God loves you, you will look for it and you will understand it. You won't take things as that's just coincidence. Or I just was lucky. Or it just happened by happenstance. Or so you will go, nope, that's my daddy. My God loves me. He, he, you know, he, so Cindy shows up with this t-shirt and I just boohoo cry. And she's like, you don't like it? I'm like, no, my gosh, I love it. Let me tell you why. <laughs> and so she blessed me with this shirt, but, I, and I didn't even realize as I was sitting, getting prepared for live, I don't know what ran across my mind that made me think about this, but I'm going to say the Holy Spirit prompted me. And then as I was thinking about it, I said, oh, I'm, I looked down and I said, oh, I'm a t the t-shirt lines up. But this is what I wanted to say. This is what I was thinking or what the Holy Spirit prompted me was this is exactly who I am. He is greater than I. He is greater than Tequila LaShawn ever could be. I am absolutely sold out to him. I am absolutely nothing without him. In my eyes, and it will always be that, and I understand, trust me, I do. I am so humbled and I am so grateful for the support and the prayers but this is one thing I said to God earlier. I said, God, I don't want to be nobody's leader. I don't want to be nobody's leader. And what I mean by that is I would rather influence you ladies and gentlemen properly in the ways of God than lead you. And I understand, understand this. I understand that God has an anointing and a call on my life. And this is the platform he's given me. And somebody has to go. Moses had to go. Joshua had to go. I understand that part. But when it comes to titles, I don't care about that. I don't want any titles. I just want the stamp of approval from God. So when God gave me the epiphany and said teaching, not preaching, I was very relieved because I'm like, yeah, because I'm, I just, God, I'm, I'm not a pastor. I'm not called a pastor. I'm not this thing. I'm not that. And I understand, you know, don't y'all, don't, don't come for me. <laughs> don't come for me tonight, auntie. <laughs> don't come for me with this. I understand he gave gifts, some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers 
all for the edifying of the body of Christ. I understand, but I don't want no titles because I think titles begin to box you in. And I think titles can sometimes cause people to feel expected to walk a certain way. And I am so comfortable right now being able to be Takiya. One of my, one of my biggest fears, and I told God this 10 years ago before I even was a successful entrepreneur in the beauty industry when I was coming out of homeless and he's telling me, right, you're going to be world renowned on your mirror, right? You're going to, things I couldn't even fathom. I remember laying on my floor prostrate. I'm telling y'all, I don't, me and that floor, we are one. <laughs> I have no problem getting prostrate before the Lord. But I remember laying on my face and crying and telling God, please, please keep me humble. I don't want nothing in this world, God, but you. But if you are calling me to a, a place over people, you are calling me to a place of wealth. You are calling me to a place of leadership. Please keep me humble. I don't want that. I want you. And so he is greater than I. And so while I am so appreciative of the support I don't care about the titles. I'm like that in business. I have so many accolades and I impress myself when I look at my resume. I'm like, who is this woman? But I don't care about those titles because when you become, it's kind of like politics. When you become a leader, I think that leaders for the most part feel they have to live up to a standard and that standard often pertains to the people. And y'all understand me? I don't care about the people. I care about God. I care about you all. You understand what I mean? But I'm not here for man's faces or man's approval. And so also what I was thinking was, I am a very strong individual, but I am so free right now being able to be vulnerable because I was conditioned to be strong for so long and being strong nearly broke me. That was the thing that nearly broke me was being strong. And I think sometimes leaders get it twisted that they have to boast their chest out and hold their head up and have a good look and the family's perfect and the finances are perfect and my children go to this school and y'all, I ain't perfect. None of us are. But understand, I'm not going back to a life where I hide my flaws because I'm told I have to look strong. That is garbage. That is garbage. So many people are hurting out here right now because they are trying to be strong and put on a good look. Jesus don't want our strength. He wants our weaknesses because in him, we are strong. I'm going to tell you, I had a wonderful Mother's Day, but my weekend was kind of garbage. I had some issues over the weekend. And it wasn't all pretty. And I and I was like, Lord, I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to hide from people that I'm human. You understand what I'm saying? I want to be vulnerable. So many women need this. So many men need this. And so I just was thinking on when it comes to leadership, if God is calling me to leadership and I know that he is and I answer the call, I say yes to him because it is for him. He understands and he's shown me my vulnerability is okay. And so as a leader, no, I'm training warriors. That's what I'm doing. I am a Joshua. I am a Joseph. I am training warriors. And so I will lead as I follow. I will lead with women. And I keep referencing women because it's a women's ministry. I will lead with warriors by my side. He is greater than I. I don't care about titles. I'm not above anyone. I thank, I thank God that you see the God in me. And I thank God that you all love me and I love you all also. 
Um, but I know y'all follow me and understand me. I just, I just, I, 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 I personally, I've seen leaders that I looked up to and I think people get caught in that and then they become concerned with the people and not the purpose anymore. I don't want that. I am no one's leader. I follow God and I want warriors to follow God with me. So I will be vulnerable and I will tell you when I cry and when I miss it and when I messed up, I messed up some things this weekend. I missed it. I forgot a few tacticals this weekend and I missed it. And I'm okay with telling you that because I am not perfect. And again, I am not going to play this thing in life where I'm going to pretend that I am so strong that I can't be weak. Not doing that anymore. So I just was thinking on that earlier before I got on the live because I was like, oh, well, Mother's Day weekend was great, but then some of it wasn't so great. And now it's time to teach Bible study. And I remember thinking, I got to get on Bible study and smile. And I'm going to smile. I love doing this. But I was just like, oh, gosh, you know, I had to knock down, bang out, all drag out. You know, me and my daughter had an argument. And I was like, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> just let me be a mother. Let me be great. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, we're good. But um, I just, I wanted to share that because I see some of the titles and I see, you know, apostle and pastor and I'm like, mm, they're going to make me go hide. They're going to make me go hide. Don't do it. Don't do it, sis. Don't do it. <laughs> so I'm like, I get like Jonah, y'all. I told y'all I get like Jonah. God is like, go do it. And I'm like, no. So we doing good. So <laughs> we doing good. But I love y'all. And um, I just... I have a heart for God. That is all I care about. I care about God's people. I love God's people. I love people. I do. I love people. I don't even know how to not like people anymore. It, it's, it really is frustrating because like I'm tottering the line right now with someone that I just want to use the H word and God is like, you know that word, not even in your vocabulary. Go sit down, take several seats. I'm like, okay. But um, I just, I love the things of God and I love people. And I just, so we are just, we're, we're warriors. I love you too. I love you all. <laughs> don't apologize. Please don't apologize. I just, I wanted to say it. I, I understand it is a reverence and a respect and an honor to God in me. I, I understand that, but I just, and you know, I just want to be Takia. I just want to be Takia and, um, you know, I, I'm not ordained. I don't have seminary teaching. I, I, I just, I am an unlearned woman, but people can see that I've been with God. That's what scripture says about the disciples. They can see that they were unlearned men, but they could see that they had been with Jesus. That's all I am. I just be with Jesus. And I know that's grammatically incorrect, but you feel me. I just bees with the Lord. <laughs> I love him. He's my best friend. He's my go-to. And, um, you know, I fussed at him yesterday and this morning. Like, how do you fuss at Jesus? Like, you didn't follow the tacticals that he gave you, that he didn't have you teach it for seven whole weeks, sis. And now you fussing at him because it didn't. How, who does that? I do. I do. Because I'm human and I'm vulnerable and I'm Takia and God knows me. And we still going to keep it pushing. So that's all I want you to learn is a relationship with God. That's the relationship we have. And it's good. So I love you. So please don't apologize. I just wanted to tell you that was on my heart. And I just, I'm, I'm, I am called to build warriors. I know that much. I am called to build warriors. And a warrior, a warrior fights alongside her sisters. A warrior fights alongside their community. And I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue to answer the call. Um, but I'm going to always do it humbly. Okay. So, um, he greater than I, so that's it ladies. So, um, I love you. <laughs> you Jonah too, I think <laughs> I can believe that it's a few, I can name some names, but I won't, but I could tell you their initials is YJ, but, um, they run like Jonah too. So. <laughs>
<laughs> I love my auntie so much, y'all. I'm going to have to have, matter of fact, I'm going to have to have her on a live one day with me also because she is such an anointed woman of God. She really, really is. And um, I just love each and every one of you. Y'all truly give me life. And so um, I love you all. Where's Monica? Monica, you quiet. I love you, Monica. <laughs> But anyway, ladies, let's uh, let me go ahead and close out in prayer, and um, we'll pick up tomorrow, seven o'clock. Um, matter of fact, I, I will tell you, um, I don't know how we'll do it. You know, we're we're in our descent this week uh, with be still, but we're gonna keep instilling it every day. And I do want to begin a study on Joshua. I have just been, I see so much that lines up with being warriors and I'm like, oh Lord, we could teach this, but I have to make sure God gives me the green light and, and in what capacity and how to do it also, because, um, I just always want to be in his will and doing what he wants me to do. So, um, and, and I do think after this, even though I love this, this has been a commitment. It's been great. It has not been work. Um, but some days it's like, I'm watching the clock. Cause I'm like, I got it's seven o'clock. I need to find a corner and sit down if I'm on the road or something. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but I do want to, I really want to embark on a study of Joshua and being warriors. And I also want to embark on a deep study of Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman. So there's a lot of things there and I'm excited. If the Lord allows it, then that's how we going to do it. So glory to God. So, all right. So I'm going to close out and um, <laughs> I love you all. And thank you so much. I know you're here. I love you all and thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to close out. I do feel like a pastor when I say that. I'd be like on my fifth close. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to close out. <laughs> that's love. That's tribute to past all my pastors out there. You know, that's one of the positives of being a pastor. You get to be like, I'm closing now. And that was like 10 closes ago. So, <laughs> all right. So, anyway. Offering the prayer of salvation, this Jesus that I talk about, he is the bomb, he is Lord, he is Savior, he is my friend, he is my confidant, he is the lover of my soul, Who he is the one who lifts me up when I'm feeling down, he is the one who tells me to sit down when I'm feeling too high and mighty, he is just good, he's good. And he has everything that we need. Okay, baby. He has everything that we need. And he wants you. And, you know, there's traditional church. And there's conventional methods. And there's religious roles and rules. But this is relationship we talking about right here. The way you hear me talk about Jesus is that simple. It's relationship. He don't want nothing else but you. I won't say I don't care what you've been told, but you have to know him for yourself. And you can't know someone unless you try them. So give him an opportunity. Give him an opportunity. Let him come into your heart. Let him tell you who he is and introduce himself. And then guess what? He'll tell you what he thinks about you. And you'll be quite surprised to know that he thinks so, so highly of you. He has so much in store for you. So Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus died and rose, then we will be saved. It's that simple. What is salvation? It's God's saving grace. When you hear us talk about salvation, it just means making a choice to accept Jesus Christ and making a decision to spend eternity once your time has come to leave this earthly suit this body and separate you either go into the heavenlies because you've accepted him or you go to hell and i don't want to see nobody i know go to hell no one i don't want to see people i don't know go to hell even i know we have a lot of people that say oh that person deserves to go to hell nobody deserves to go to hell nobody because if that was the case if jesus didn't come and we didn't accept him we would all be going there Nobody's perfect. We are all flawed. Even the worst of criminals, the worst of malicious hearts, they can be healed when Jesus Christ is introduced. And people 
don't become people because they're born that way. People become people because something or someone instilled things in them. So Jesus Christ can instill, revert, convert, fix, heal, any and everything. So I'm going to pray and I am going to say a prayer of salvation. And I want you to pray what I say. And it's that simple. And you will be saved. And you begin your relationship. You don't know what to say to him. You just say hi. All right, Jesus. Here I am. What do we do? Hey, Jesus. Let's get it. Jesus, you want to go to dinner? <laughs> you, you just you have a relationship with him. So I'm going to pray. Say what I say. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come before your throne. <clears throat> I come according to your word in Romans 10, 9 and 10. You said, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, Jesus as Lord, then I'll be saved. Jesus, I believe you died and rose just for me. Just for me, Jesus. Just for me. I accept you. Come into my heart. Welcome into my life. Save me. Please forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you so much for the freedom and the ability to live in you to walk and talk in you. I thank you, God, for the souls that have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God, do a new work in them. Touch their hearts and touch their homes. Touch their families. Touch their children. Touch their lives, Father God. Touch their minds. Touch their bodies. Touch every state and fiber of their being, Father God. Lord, let your presence transcend them, even those watching right now, all the women, all the ladies, Lord God, the men, Lord God, especially the men, Father, we need godly leaders, we need godly examples. Touch them right now, Lord God, let your presence manifest, let your glory enter in, that they may experience more of you in worship. God, it is a sweet, sweet atmosphere. There's so much peace in your presence. There's so much purpose in your presence there's so much god when you show up but you show up when we show up god we have to recognize that we need to come to you because you are always there father just let us begin to lay down our burdens father god you said we can cast our cares upon you so i lift up each and every one here i lift monica up in prayer lord i bind that heavy heart father I bind it in the name of Jesus and I loose and release, Lord God, your peace that passes all understanding. I loose and release your strength, Father God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for showing up for her. I thank you that if she cries out to you, you respond, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the spirit of laughter and joy. Father, I thank you for the spirit of peace, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, for just your presence, Lord God, continuing to encompass and camp about each and every one of them, Lord God. For you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, Father. Lord, you're very real. You are very real. And we continue to approach your throne of grace. We continue to approach your throne of mercy from a place of true worship, giving you homage and reverence and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. That's it. Um, it was something that I thought about while I was praying. I think it was. Or the Holy Spirit said to me. I don't know. But anyway, that's it. <laughs> All right. I got to get from under this fan. Every time I sit under it too long, y'all hear I get a little nasal. But anyway, um, I love you, ladies. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Cherry Tile Alana, hello. Is Alana listening tonight? If she is, hello, Miss Alana. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Well, have a good night, ladies. And I'll see you here tomorrow at 7, okay? Good night.